So within the di the demographics and the ages and the people and even politically, and it sounds funny, but even like um, politically speaking, like if they're more conservative and they have a church background, uh, they're going to know hymns more than the, the people in the city that are not churched and they don't even know what a hymn is. And that language is a little confusing for them. So when I'm coaching my worship leaders, so let me back up and say, I do have worship leaders that are assigned to certain locations because that's the church they go to. I am always coaching them about shepherd your people where they're at. So you need to, as a worship leader, meet people where they're at. So you can't force them to be where you are. You have to go to where they're at and draw them to deeper places or however you want to look at that. And so it is challenging because when we introduce a new song, I can kind of tell. I think it's probably the, the grace of the Lord to allow me to oversee all of them. But I can kind of tell this song is going to work really well at this location, but I think everyone's going to look at me cross-eyed at this location. And so I don't have any sort of set rules about if we introduce one song, it must go through the whole church. We, 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 we are one church in, in multiple locations, but within the context, it's like saying, you know, um, I'm a popsicle, but I may be cherry and I may be grape, but I'm still a popsicle, you know. So I'm a Mile High Vineyard worship leader, but I may be cherry. I may not be grape. And, and that's a big deal because then you're authentic to who you are and then the worship is, is actually meeting the people where they're at. So that is challenging though. Um, have you ever heard of the books, Choose Your Own Adventure books? So when you're little, there are these books, and you'd open the first page, and you'd read it. And then at the bottom of that page, it says, turn to the next page, or you can go to page 27. So you get to kind of choose your own adventure. That's a little bit how multi-site works. It's like, you can just go page to page, and that works. But there's these other options. And so honestly, the biggest um, struggle slash I think it's a strength is my worship team has to be that type of mentality. They can't be like people that are used to coming in to the same thing every Sunday and this is what happens because we always have so many moving parts. So our pastor some weeks is traveling between all the sites. That means your set list order is in the opposite of what it would be if he's not traveling. So even just that, the flow of worship, you have to be able to say, well, this set list would work, you know, starting with the call to worship and then an upbeat song and then a medium song and then a slow song but it also needs to work if I need to flip it and, and go the other way. Like we're starting after ministry time and it's going more intimate into celebration. And so it's a little bit, um, I feel like it's unfair if I would have been in this moment when I first started leading worship, I probably would have felt overwhelmed. So there's a big, big grace window that we try to give our newest leaders and musicians like, hey, listen, you may feel like your head's spinning a little bit. We're juggling a lot but you'll settle in and it's what God wants. He wants this whole city to be transformed. And the best way we can do it is having our church where people can walk to church versus having to drive 30 minutes. And they're not going to drive. They don't want to drive 30 minutes in our city. And that's why we're forced to kind of do church this way. So it's for the kingdom. It's, it's the right thing to do. It just has a lot of, a lot of moving parts.